world is 7.5 billion people. And out of those 7.5 billion, 3.5 of them are living in poverty. If the projections are correct, there will be 9.6 billion people living on the planet in 2050. With so much poverty in so many places, I started to think about the power of people and inspiring them to be a part of the solution. How can entrepreneurship end global poverty? Humans are incredibly powerful, and I believe that in everyone, there's an entrepreneurial spirit that they can unleash to create their own economic wealth. I've always been inspired by people's natural sense of optimism, even in challenging circumstances. When I was eight years old, I traveled with my family to Zimbabwe, Africa, where we spent the day at a school for children who were HIV positive. While I expected, I, I expected it to be a place filled with sadness and anxiety, what I instead experienced was hope. With dirt floors as the foundation and only two small meals a day, these kids were not only happy, but they felt fortunate, and they spoke about ways that they could make the world a better place. While I was initially apprehensive about this visit, I took so much away from it, and I often think about the children's optimism and their empowered approach to solving difficult problems. When I was eight years old, I didn't know the definition of entrepreneurship, but I saw the attributes of it in these young children. My mother is from a family of Polish and Croatian immigrants who taught her that through hard work, anything is possible. Helping children from less fortunate backgrounds is something she is passionate about, leading to her involvement with the global nonprofit NIFTI, which stands for Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. This organization teaches at-risk youth basic business skills and how to tap into their inner entrepreneur to gain inspiration to create a business plan. They then compete for funding to launch their companies. I'm very curious about different cultures and how people embrace both good and bad circumstances. Since I lived in Brussels, Belgium, and London when I was younger, I had the opportunity to travel around Europe and other areas of the world, and I saw how poverty can affect families. After my travels, I came to believe that optimism and ambition are two universal traits in people. When I was 14 years old, I went with my parents to a competition for the New York City chapter of NIFTI. I saw teenagers from very challenged social and economic backgrounds stand up in front of accomplished business professionals and pitch their ideas. I saw two boys pitch an idea for an ethnic popcorn company, driven by their desire for a snack that reminded them of where their families were from. I met a Muslim girl who was designing customized hijibs since she felt that there was a lack of personalization in the one she was currently buying. I thought again about the children in Zimbabwe and realized that their passion and drive was similar to the nifty kids I was meeting. Optimism and possibility seem to be inherent in us, and understanding how to turn an idea into a business could help these kids change their lives. As I met other nifty kids, I listened to those who had gained funding and built viable businesses tell stories about how they were helping their families make ends meet through their company's profits. These kids were 15 and 16 years old and understood the power of taking an idea and creating a business to better their lives. They were a testament to the power of entrepreneurship to bring children and communities out of poverty. Entrepreneurship seemed like it was a solution to solving the global poverty challenge. For the past two summers, I've had the opportunity to work as an intern at the Nifty Summer Business Camp in Brooklyn, New York. I worked with kids my own age and helped them create a business plan. While I'm not an expert in business, I learned elements of a business plan and worked mostly with the students to understand their target audience, to create companies suited to their community's needs and to better understand the positioning of their products. These kids were incredibly passionate and driven to succeed despite the challenges. As I met other Nifty kids tell their stories about how they were helping their families make ends meet through their company's profits, I realized that they truly understood what entrepreneurship was. And at camp, these kids worked with mentors, and I noticed how powerfully the mentors motivated the students. Seeing the impact people have on each other when they're supported by one another really impressed me. After this, I truly began to understand the power of entrepreneurship, and I started to think of ways that it could change the world. Last summer, there was a particular project I felt driven towards. My interest was driven by the project, but more so by the student behind the project, Carlos. Carlos is my age and moved to New York City from Brazil. He believed anything was possible and brought both knowledge and an open mind to create a successful organic soap company. 
Seeing Carlos in action reaffirmed my belief that anyone has the power to take a simple idea, like soap, prototype it, and build a successful company. After my very rewarding experience with the Nifty community, I realized that I did not have to wait to become involved to make this change. Even though I was still in high school, I could be a dynamic part of further spreading entrepreneurship around the world. My experiences over the past few years confirm my belief that everyone has the power to make a small but impactful change to society. My work with Nifty and with Carlos inspired me to further my research by learning what successful global business leaders thought on the growing importance of entrepreneurship. In order to answer this question, we must first broaden the definition of entrepreneurship. Society today tends to celebrate entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs or Richard Branson, whose inventions have benefited people around the world. How do we celebrate entrepreneurs around us? In order to answer this question, I recently reached out to a broad list of leaders to understand their input on the importance of expanding the definition of entrepreneurship. I've spoken to a wide range of experts, from authors and United Nations representatives to CMOs and CEOs of international companies. I spoke with an author and an entrepreneur herself, Danielle Tate, who confirmed my belief that anyone has the power to change his or her society for the better. And we spoke about small acts of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is all around us, but we do not often recognize it as entrepreneurship. When you see girls, when you see Girl Scouts selling cookies to raise money, you see a spirit of entrepreneurship. Kids who create small businesses like tutoring, babysitting, dog walking are examples of entrepreneurship all around us. <laughs> Children are inherently creative and optimistic. The challenge is often infrastructure to exploit what is possible in these young children. Lack of support and education can limit their ability to grow and contribute. At the same time, the current tension between my generation and our society today is palpable. I strongly believe that my generation wants to make the world a better place. And through social media, we have an outlet to share our thoughts and opinions to create a dialogue about the important issues. I also believe that the sharing of personal narratives of success can make challenging topics, like poverty, easier to tackle. Fueling conversation about the issues is an opportunity to get more people involved. The solution is to expose children in developing countries to even the smallest stories about how other kids have in fact been able to make great things happen. Even children from less fortunate backgrounds are optimistic and hopeful and want to make the world a better place. I saw the sense of hope in Africa and I see it today in the eyes of the many friends I've made at Nifty. While the road to decreasing poverty may be long, stories of hope and providing basic infrastructure are two areas that will improve our results. If kids see what is possible, they can tap into their dreams to create something that will not only help them, but slowly contribute to decrease the growing poverty rate. One of the inspiring things I've learned in the recent months is that I am one of the many people working to solve this problem. A quote from one of my mentors on this project, the United Nations representative Claudia Korbler, sums up my belief on the future of what's possible. Claudia passionately shared with me her confidence in our society by stating, it only takes one vision for a common mission. If people take a moment to truly think about the power of entrepreneurship, we're one step closer to decreasing poverty. What's next? I want to inspire the next generation of children in developing countries to become entrepreneurs. I want to be a part on taking the projections on poverty down, and I will continue to believe in the power of what's possible through, through empowering children with poverty. I realize now that I've been on this journey of wanting to make great things happen for kids for most of my life. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has.